Chris Lattery doing play-by-play -play commentary. And I'm Mako Moore doing the color commentary for our second game of San Diego Beach Bowl. We're excited to have you here with us. In this second game, we do have Arizona Sidewinders against San Diego Super Bloom. Super Bloom having just come off of their win against LA Astra in double overtime, a very exciting game. Uh, what do you expect Arizona to put out against Super Bloom, knowing that they just had a game? A lot of their core dominant players just ran, you know, for a full an hour. I'm expecting Arizona to come out in some sort of a zone formation. It's a little bit windy here today, and we saw Astra pull off a zone against the Super Bloom that worked very, very well to stifle their offense. Yeah, and I, I, from watching previous games of the Arizona Sidewinders, you know they are a very athletic team. They have a lot of players who are able to just. <laughs> no other way to put it run for days really so i think that's going to be a big hurdle for super bloom to to play against and arizona has a lot of dominant players on their own roster you know a standout cutter for example who's really good on on defensive blocks cynthia thomas one of the faster cutters for sure in the league uh we also have uh Carly Steiner handling. There's Cody Lippincott, a very immense force downfield for Sidewinders. And dude, Sidewinders also has experience with playing multiple games in one weekend. They did have the Sidewinders showdown in week one where they played, I believe, three games in one weekend. So it, it was able to, uh, they were able to have those spread out one game a day, uh, but excited to see what Arizona brings to the field and see how Super Bloom contends with having just played this past very intense game against Astra and having to pull it together, play a second game. Yeah, I hope the Super Bloom has the legs to make this second game a good one for us. I know that the Arizona, si Arizona Sidewinders have a lot of gals who are super fast. A lot of quick cutters. They love to huck it. They love to work that break side. So I'm excited to see Jade McLaughlin grinding the unders and Aubrey Diedrich available all day in the deep space. We'll yeah. see what Super Bloom's able to come up with defensively to stop those two gals. Yeah, I think both of those cutters are are such dominant forces in the downfield space. And I I know that Super Bloom has talked about really respecting Dietrich in the deep space. In past games, it seems like defenders kind of underestimate her. Like she is, she is so fast, but also needs to be respected as that fast, deep look for Sidewinders, as well as the handlers, uh, handler defense stopping those big, deep throws uh, to these these powerful cutters downfield. Yeah, I'm excited to see how Arizona uh, works with their offense. I heard that Ari Nelson is not here this weekend, so it'll be interesting to see who steps into her place to make those bomb throws. Yeah, definitely uh, a couple last minute roster changes on both sides. Uh, Super Bloom missing Alex Diaz on their O-line. And as you said, Sidewinders uh, not having Ari Nielsen with them this weekend. We'll see how that plays into how both of these offenses work. We have Crypto to Avery. Avery launching it immediately to Kayla. Kayla going up, can't get it. And it's a turn. Jade with the under, open, tries to dump it, and it's up. Looks like that was Powell able to keep that possession alive. Working the unders out of this vertical stack, and we have a pick. Myland with the disc for Sidewinders. Okay, 
Looks like call is resolved. Play resumed. Oh, another. Working it to Jade. McLaughlin gets a dump off to Liz Murphy under. Liz is able to dump it. Back to Jade again. McLaughlin really running this offensive look from Sidewinders, being the open downfield cutter. And a turn. Just a little out of reach of the cutter, and Iwamoto with the heads up D to make sure it does not connect with another Sidewinders receiver. Maldonado to pick up to Salvez Sean. Kayla's going deep, not an option. Back to Maldonado. A little bit of dancing in the handler zone. Looks like Super Bloom is getting pushed back a little bit. Oh, and just off the hands of Maldonado. Hate to see it happen. Sidewinder setting up their vertical stack. Looking on the break side, open side to Liz Murphy. Great pressure by Messner on Super Bloom. Ooh, turn from Jade, might be a foul. Yeah, it looks like there was some contact with Iwamoto and McLaughlin on that, but definitely a, a bladey diss that might be the result of a foul. Yeah, it looks like the observers are signaling for foul. I don't think there's any any discussion about it, so going back to Down McLaughlin. <clears throat> All right, coming in on one, freestyle, four, three, two, one, disc in. And an immediate goal. Yeah, it looks like Sidewinders were able to get it to Sam Myland and keep possession and able to punch it in. Let's see if we'll get a replay of that, that score after the foul. Here's a replay. We see McLaughlin with the disc, able to find Myland just past her defender. Yeah, I, I feel like Sidewinders are trying to come out in this game starting off strong, knowing they have the advantage of not having just played a game and just trying to get an early lead on, on Super Bloom, if possible. We'll see how Super Bloom offense looks. Yeah, I think Super Bloom needs to play a bit more of a possession game and just hold onto the disc and let their O-line do the work that they're supposed to do. Yeah, that, that is a great strategy for this, this second game, the energy that they're able to bring uh, with their key players. Lang's picking up, centering to Kelly, Iwamoto, finding a nice lefty backhand to Vendetta, who finds Avery, into Torch, who dumps it, swing into Lang, Avery open again, under. Oh, and an errant dump pass. Yeah, just to a turn. Just out of reach of Maldonado again. I feel like the wind is has played into the past two uh, passes between those two Super Bloom handlers. Sidewinders moving it up. Oh, unsure if there was contact on that. Looked like it was going to be a big release from Shelby Petty. A foul is called. I'm unsure if uh, Iwamoto is contesting it. Looks like. Looks like it might be contested, or they're at least having discussion about the timing of that foul. Observer upholds the foul call. Got to reset the vertical stack. <laughs> Back to the year places. It's always kind of hard to tell where exactly you were when a call goes up if you weren't. And there's Throwing that deep shot. Oh, cannot hold on to it. Great bid though. Yeah, it looks like it's, the wind has definitely picked up for the second game. We're seeing these throws 
not quite connect, just bouncing off the hands of, of receivers. Lang bringing it in. I need an open receiver. Torch with the under, available to get it. Looking for dump. Hannah Walters grabs it. Just taking their time with this offense. Playing a possession game. Looks like their Sidewinders is trying to, to poach in a way that gets Super Bloom onto that sideline. Pick called, I would assume, with how the stack is shaping up downfield. A lot of people in that space. Easy, easy for a pick to occur. Back in play here, Pajunas with the disc. Stuck on that sideline, looking for something. Hannah Walters with a great grab, heads up play. And a break for the goal! That was a, a beautiful, beautiful set after coming off of that call. Pajunas able to kind of Hail Mary throw to Walters, who then very easily spotted Salvation in the end zone for that break score. We are now 1-1 in this first quarter of the Sidewinder Super Bloom game. Let's see that replay. There we see from a different angle, Walters grabbing that great heads up grab and then Salvation bringing it in for the score. We'll get there. Pole is out of bounds. Looks like Carly Steiner taking it up to the brick, center of the field. We have a big bomb. Kayla's looking for it. Oh, Ooh. nice D by Kayla. Dietrich could not come up with it. And those are the deep shots to Dietrich that we were talking about ahead of ahead of this game starting. Oh, and, and a Dietrich. bomb by Lang immediately, looking for Kayla. And it connects. She dumps it to Neha, and uh, it looks like we have a call. Timeout time by Angela out. Wells. Classic call, Angela. Yeah, definitely seems like this is a good time to maybe shift in some of those O-line players now that we have possession in a pretty good spot, I'd say. Like a good swing to the center and we can get the disc into the end zone. We'll see if uh, Sidewinders decide to swap out any of their players, put on some of their hardier defensive players. Let's take a look again at Helton's play before this time out. There's that D, just in that deep space. And then she's, I mean, they're not bookends, but <laughs> got the D and then got the deep score, or not score, <laughs> grab. Hopefully a score soon. Yeah, we'll see. Lang to Kayla is generally a winning combo that I would put money on. Coming out on O, Lang's picking up. Potentially deep to Pujonas, not an option. Looking for Kelly Iwamoto. Oh, it's a little too high. It's a turn. Sidewinders, center the disc. Look for the break side to Jade McLaughlin. Jade's looking for a dump. We've got some shutdown D and she's got to bomb it. Oh, a stall is also called. Yeah, it looks like a stall was called back uh, with Pajinas and it looks like McLaughlin 
That disc did roll all the way to the opposite end zone. We're going to listen in. If we can to the observers. Um, when they tap it, you can move. Someone has to come back. So just go ahead and tap it and you're good to go. It's like the stall is upheld. Backhand, backhand. <laughs> Super Bloom now on O. Lang picks up to Jonas. Little collision with the Super Bloomers. But they maintain possession. And a goal to Kayla Helton. Who else? I believe that is a break. San Diego coming off of their last win. Hopefully holding on to that energy. Looks like they're able to and, and get a break. Let's see a replay of that. You see Pajunas. Getting it down to Stamba, who then sees Kayla Helton for a nice score. Yeah, there's no indicator, like there's no flag that we can see out here, but folks, the wind has definitely picked up for this second game. I'm surprised we haven't seen more zone looks from, from both teams, but hey, maybe we'll see it right now from Super Bloom defense. Looks like it. Good call. We oh. got a bomb. Oh, and wow. I see by Kayla Hilton. They are really testing Helton as deep, deep in this zone. And you know what? She's passing with flying colors so far. Picking it up on the end zone line. Immediately, Kayla to Jonas. Got a deep open. Dump swing. Ellis with the disc. Nice quick handler movement there between Ellis and Wool. Frost. Yeah, it's Sarah Zane cut, oh. unfortunately. Just through the hands of number 16, Lauren Stewart. San Diego with a bid to try to get that back. Sidewinders finding open space. Looks like there's a call. I'm guessing a pick. But we'll see. Time out. Time out for Sidewinders. Definitely a good strategy if you want to take a breath, come up with a play, reset the stall. If it was climbing up there, getting close to that, that seven stall. As we saw from the last game that ended in a double overtime victory, every point matters. So I could see calling a timeout and wanting to possess and ensure this goal. Yeah, definitely. And I imagine San Diego is anticipating some sort of pool play from Sidewinder. So they're probably figuring out the best way to stop that with their defense. We'll see what Sidewinders have in store for us after this timeout. Looks like offense is going to set up. We'll see if San Diego comes out with any trick plays. Looking like person D at the moment. Sidewinders in their vertical stack. Dump for Gaines. And Kayla with another D. I think she's coming for Pajinas' stats from the last game. Trying to climb up the ladder with those blocks. We've got Pajunas open for an in cut. Swing. Dump swing. 
Ellis with a dis, looking for Wool. Oh, oh. A D. LP. Harley Steiner with it. And a foul call. Wait one second. We'll see what the observers are, are ruling for this. This call. We're gonna have a pre stall. Four. Looks like it's staying three, with Steiner. Two, one. Oh, an inside flick and just a little out of Dietrich's reach. San Diego picking up again on the on their own end zone. Dabowski with the disc. Handler's working it. An unfortunate uh, turn. Sidewinders with another shot for an end zone play here. See number 25, McLaughlin looking for that up line. Oh, just off the hands of number 22, Lindsay Doyle. I feel like that's a that's a player we would see a sure grab from. So again, just have to wonder how much the wind is playing into these these drops that we're seeing on both sides. Super Bloom relying <laughs> heavily on Kayla. Yeah, a little bobble from Kayla, but Ellis able to scoop it up, save possession. Taneha. Nice grab. She's got to bomb it. Can Super Bloom come up with it? Of oh. course Kayla can. <laughs> Helton. Taneha. Little, little game of catch in front of the end zone. Right Vine outside Kinker, the end zone. Seeing Pajunas. Oh! Yes, Pajunas comes down with it. What a snag by Pajunas. And Vine Kinker seeing that Pajunas is going up line and saying, I trust my teammate. Here's the disc for the score. That's a great break for Super Bloom. And really, that started back with uh, Samantha Wool's probably high stall put, which got it off the the close half of the of the field and Super Bloom was finally able to get it near their end zone and punch in that score. Score now is 3-1. I think I heard that the stream might not have been live for the first couple of minutes. Just a recap. Um, Sidewinders were able to hold and get an offensive point for the first point, and then San Diego also held for the next point, bringing it to 1-1, and then San Diego got a break, making it 2-1. And now here we are with another break from San Diego, bringing us to 3-1. Cynthia Thomas with the disc. We see Thomas going, streaking deep. See if Sidewinders want to hit that cutter in the, the wind today. Arizona playing possession until Oh, now. my goodness. Heads up D interception by Ellis. Kayla putting it deep. Oh, oh, that was nearly a tip from Sidewinders into Salvation's hands for a score. Helton having put that up to try to punch in the, the score. Sidewinders working it with an open under and a dump. This quarter is about to come to an end, so Sidewinders will possess until they no longer possess. Yeah, after if Sidewinders after either have to Cynthia score. Thomas deep. Oh, oh, great D. So that will be the end of this first quarter as it is a turn and Sidewinders had possession with an, with the time ran out. Lexa Stombaugh with a great D there at the end. Yeah, I, I would have to say that for this first quarter, we're definitely seeing both teams contend with this wind. Uh, person defense trying to maybe feel out 
each other. Let's see that replay. We see it go up to Cynthia Thomas, but Stamba able to just tip that disc just out of Cynthia Thomas's hands. All right, we will be right back for the second quarter after this short break. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me. And what was left over, I put towards my dreaming. But the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for, believe me. Take into your hands a plan, your own hands can land your own brand and damn I feel like no one takes accountability, they want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours It takes to get some power, don't be f***ing sour Take a cold shower, scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder and f*** all the doubters They're just your downers Welcome back to the second quarter of the Super Bloom versus Sidewinders game. Looks like Super Bloom is coming out on defense. Yeah, it was uh, kind of a, a drop for drop first quarter. I, I feel like I'm a broken record here talking about this win, which you might be able to hear a little bit of in our mics, but it's definitely affecting the way these teams are able to play. Sidewinders picking up. I'm surprised that more teams haven't come out in a zone defense, and it looks like Super Bloom is now. They can hear us. <laughs> Jade boosting it to Aubrey for a big goal. Oh, I believe she lost possession on that bid. Maybe did not hit the ground in the best way. Looks like there is an injury. Dietrich really known for these these huge bids, this dominant deep player, and I think just running down that disc and that bid not exactly not exactly the safest. Let's take a look at that replay. We see that great put. Dietrich there catches it, but looks like just maybe hits in the um, the sternum area. Just yeah, not. I Knocked the wind out of yeah, her, probably. Might have the wind knocked out of her. Hopefully it's nothing serious. One of their main, main threats. Yeah, we had the trainer there down on the field. Looks like we are getting a sub, but you know, of course, taking, taking our time, making sure their player is okay before moving her off the field. Diego. Super Bloom, anyone want a sub? Everyone gonna stay. Aubrey is generally known as one of Shame's uh, biggest deep threats in the game, so you hate to see her down. Yeah, just hoping the player's okay. Looks like there is a, a bit of a limp there. Maybe it was a, a, a connection with her leg in the ground that just did not work well. Yeah. Hoping though that She's okay, able to, to walk it off. We do have a sub coming in. Trying to see if... Disc is live! Okay, so possession live! was lost in that bid, so now it will be Super Bloom picking up for a chance at another break. Picking up on the end zone line. Ellis setting up for that dump. Immediate centering pass. 
seeing Sarah's sing on the far side. Back to Zing. Zing cuts oven after passing it. Pujonas has an open field. <laughs> Ops to break. A little bit of a middle towards Lexa. Lexa to Kayla, who holsters her huck. Ooh, and we got Laura, Lauren Stewart able to pick up that disc just tipped off of Pajunas' hands. Ellis with a bit of a bobble, but maintains possession. Ellis and Pujonas working it. Yeah, this ping ponging back and forth. Good patience in the handler set. Cutters are just waiting for handlers to, to get in a good position to hit the downfield. Nice break by Ellis to Frost. Looks like a call. pick is called. I think that is on Sarah Zing. Disc is in with Zing. Looking for a dump. Who gets one in Ellis? Ellis throws the break to Kayla Hilton for the Ooh, goal. That was a smooth, buttery break. That is another break for San Diego, and we are now looking at a score of 4-1 San Diego. I guess San Diego must be really working off that energy of their last win. I know they had some roster shift uh, from the last game, but let's look at that replay. Ellis just easily breaking the mark to find Helton waiting for that score. She is very tall, definitely able to step around most marks. Oh, yeah. Marking Ellis, <laughs> never, never fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what Alicia Stown, the defensive coach for Super Bloom, has in play here. Wonder if we're going to see a zone look or if Super Bloom's going to maybe continue working it with, with person D. They did come out in zone last point and it worked out so we'll see yeah you're right it did Powell centers looks like they are in some sort of a junk yeah seeing some sagging number 12 Megan Maxfield generally a great deep threat but working the unders for the Zono right now yeah really able to come through with the crashes there Number eight, Shelby Petty, also moving the disc. Just a lot of short throws from Sidewinders, really working it. I they think they're back in person D now. Looking deep, and Kayla eats it up to Lang. Yeah. Super Bloom now in possession. I think they, uh, Super Bloom knows Sidewinders want to get it to Cynthia Thomas, and Helton was able to capitalize on that slight poach. Lang launches to Kayla. Kayla with a great grab right on the end zone line. She has Neha. Looks for Pujonas. Smart dump. Wool with the disc. Pujonas wide open. Lang with a bid to keep the possession. To T Fang. Say Fang looking for a break side. Goal. That was a little bit of a nail biter when Fang was looking for some sort of fill dump, but able to spot Wool, who was just there on the sideline to, to bring that score in. Yeah, Sidewinders, or not Sidewinders, <laughs> Super Bloom executing their vertical stack in the end zone very well. All right, let's take a look here at the Huck. Kayla Hilton running that down, no problem. And then a nice, patient, end zone set from Super Bloom with Wool there to ensure the score. And Super Bloom is up 5-1. Yeah, a bird stack is hard to do, but when you do it properly, it allows those break side throws to be open and available. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I feel like an advantage here with, with how we're, we're using the space. Super Bloom coming out on D. 
got Carly centering it. Back to Carly. Ah, and Lippincott unable to maintain possession. Yeah, an uncharacteristic drop once again. Laying to Avery. Avery launches it to Torch. And Torch with the goal. Oh! That was a break throw to Salvation. And just an easy snag in the end zone. And there we can see Salvation celebrating. <laughs> Jones and Salvation celebrating together. Let's see that replay again. We see Jones just using that break space beautifully. Salvation able to reel that in for the score. Avery put that in the space just perfectly where the defender was unable to make any sort of play on it. Yeah, definitely. I imagine that Sidewinders are, are trying to talk about how their offense can come up against the Super Bloom defense. I think I think it is some miscommunication for Sidewinders, and they just need to shake that out and, and get those connections. Helton with the pull. Inbounds. Centering to Steiner. Steiner swings it to Lindsay Doyle. Jade goes back to Doyle. And Carly finding an oh. open threat. Oh, Jade. That was quite uncharacteristic bobble. It looks like there is a call from McLaughlin. Yeah, that disc just seemed to have a mind of its own. Just flopping out of it looked like she was faking it and then no. maybe lost no possession contest. with the wind all right foul is called it's oh, here a foul. okay that that would make a little more sense there <laughs> yeah that would have been a quite the uncharacteristic move from the where you were when the turnover happened where you were when the turnover happened i'm going to pre-stall pre-stall four all right play Three, coming back in mclaughlin two, with the disc, one, disc is in. looking for a dump I'd say another foul call happening here. Lexa Samba on the mark. Yeah, playing a very tight Free mark. Spell. Jade looking for an option, trying to dump. Gets one off. Nice break throw from LP. To Doyle. Marilyn Reich seems like they're looking for that disc back. LP on the sideline throwing another break to Carly. Steiner with it. With an IO forehand break to Doyle for the goal. Yeah, I think Sidewinders really needed that goal. Kind of let themselves know that their O-line is able to work together, come together, get that movement against the San Diego defense. Uh, we do see, you know, Steiner, Doyle, McLaughlin, a lot of touches with that disc, definitely running the show there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like some of them are also, do you see any of them coming back for this D-line? No. See Cynthia Thomas, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that, yep, a staple for the Sidewinders D-line, for she sure. She has been a force as the deep, deep. And here we see the fans. It seems like the blow up cutout of players' faces is a popular trend going on. Yep, they've got the big head. That's Liz Murphy's. And yeah. a Sidewinder in the stadium. Look out. Yeah, very, very nice to see Sidewinder fans able to make it out to San Diego to support their team. This is Super Bloom's O line for the first time in a long time. Centering to Kelly Iwamoto, who gets Avery Jones. Looks a little poachy. I wouldn't quite call it a zone. But definitely trying to get Super Bloom on that sideline. Make them throw that backhand. Like there's a call. A couple throws ago. Maybe with Leslie Wills. It's here, Castle One. Yeah, let's. Back to Avery. 
Staying, staying with Jones may have been a call with Willis, but staying with Jones. We see Jones kind of directing traffic there, telling folks, play is in. Kelly Iwamoto with it, one of the fastest gals in the game. Can confirm. And Ooh. a goal to Avery Jones. What a UCSD connection. You think they've uh, they've done that before? <laughs> Familiar. Just like they drew it off. <laughs> Familiar territory for those two. Definitely able to just work it in a little give and go. Celebration. <laughs> Love to see him having fun. Yeah, I, I feel like let's look at a replay here. That little give and go. Avery Jones able to reel it in with that touch throw from Iwamoto. I'm, I'd have to say that the energy that Superbloom is bringing to this game seems like they are a lot more confident. They've kind of settled into their routine. I don't know what they talked about between the games, but it's working. Yeah, you have to wonder if having that first game really helped them like establish the rhythm and get ready for the second game. Yeah, Sidewinders here for the O point. Centering to Steiner to LP. Aragon to, to Doyle. Doyle. Oh, oh, wow. Kayla with the D. Lang's picking up for Super Bloom. And big, gets a big gainer. Zoe Tesla. Tesla to Neha. Neha looking for Kayla. Kayla wide open. Neha going. Kayla's opting for a dump. Looks, Looks like it's hit by Jade. We're probably a discussion it. of contact, but I do see uh, for Sidewinders, Dietrich back on the field, and that is heartening to see that she is okay after that bid. It is good to see. She's one of their star players. They're definitely going to need her in this second quarter. We ruled that it was no stall. No, 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 no foul. No foul. You're right. Okay. No foul. Uh, foul call, not a stall call. <laughs> Um, and it does look like observers are saying no foul, which means possession. Goes to the sidewinders. Unsure. Jake gets the D. I think the observer threw the disc back to where they thought the disc was. <laughs> yeah, where an immediate bomb from LP. Looking for Donahue. Donahue and unable to to connect. Lang was able to disrupt disrupt enough. Centering to Pujonas. Back to Lang. And Super Bloom fighting for that high side. Lang working it to Pujonas. Pujonas airs it out to Kayla. What a combo. Will she get it? Kayla Beautiful reads it read. perfectly. I assume Angela made a timeout call. Yeah, timeout called. It's definitely going to be a good time. Right in front of the, their end zone, able to put in that end zone play, put whoever they want as one in the stack. And let's get a replay of that throw. See Pajunas just putting it to Helton, knowing that. She is a force in the deep space. Yeah, trust your receiver. If it's yeah. Kayla Hilton, you can <laughs> trust her. Also, those two, Pajunas and Helton, having a phenomenal game uh, against Astra, and I think just carrying that energy through uh, against Sidewinders here. I asked Kayla who she was excited to play with the most, and she said Pujonas and her <laughs> are having a great time together. Yeah, it is, is definitely sh shining through. Those two are phenomenal players, uh, both forces in their own right. Love to watch. Looks like Avery Jones is gonna be picking it up for Super Bloom. With a Iwamoto almost in like a 90 degree dump. And who do we have? One in stack is Maldonado. Looks like we got a little, little handler play about to about to start here. Let's see what shakes up. We do see a poach by Sidewinders trying to clear out that open space. Iwamoto getting high in the stall. Not a lot of options. Has to put it up. Sees Messner. Messner running it down. 
Blair, no one's on you. Back to Iwamoto. Nice tuck and roll. Blair with, it with not a lot of options. Back to Iwamoto. I feel like the stack should maybe come in a little bit, help out. Avery Jones for the goal. And that is another go goal for Jones. Great possession by Super Bloom there. Just really able to work within their end zone set. Uh, Messner with a great rundown of that throw. Of course, you know, she catches it. Messner is one of the speediest cutters in, in the San Diego Ultimate area and probably in the league. Let's see a replay again. That looked like a lefty backhand from Iwamoto to Maldonado, who sees Avery Jones open for a goal. Yeah, we're coming up on about two minutes left in the second quarter. Uh, Super Bloom, eight to two to Sidewinders. Really looking to see how Sidewinders respond to the, the force that Super Bloom D-line and O-line players are, are bringing to this game. Centering pass to Steiner, to Doyle. Trying to work it, looks zone, zone look from, from Super Bloom. Back to Steiner, who's caught on this downwind side. Sneaks it through. Oh. An a attempt to bid. save with a bid from McLaughlin. Just a s miscommunication with, with Sidewinders. Definitely something we're seeing with this wind. And it oh, looks like the same thing. Miscommunication from Halton to Lang. Diedrich Steiner in that deep immediately space. Immediately looking for Diedrich. Right outside of the goal line, six yards to go. Open receiver and Jade McLaughlin. That's the goal. And those are the the two players on on Sidewinders. Not the only two players, but definitely two players on Sidewinders who are a threat in the deep space and just patient patient possession from Dietrich. Seeing McLaughlin without without a defender and able to get that score, bringing us to 8-3 Super Bloom. Great to see Dietrich back on the game. Let's get a replay. We see that beautiful put to Dietrich. Wide open. Dietrich to Jade McLaughlin. Dietrich is a is a lefty, right? I'm, I'm assuming that lefty backhand here. You know, usually when I play against her, she's receiving the disc, so. Yeah, I <laughs> do I do see in my notes she is she is left handed. Generally she's skying it above me. <laughs> so. Kelly Iwamoto picking up for Super Bloom O line on the sideline. Torch in a power position. Iwamoto swinging it. Maldonado. Super Bloom fighting for that high side, getting it and staying over there. We see stack trying to work it, might be a little deep. Yeah. Looks like a vert stack. Dabowski snagging that on an undercut. Salvation. Maldonado. Faking for Blair to come under. Oh, Iwamoto just can't hold on to that with a drop. Sidewinders now have an option. Shelby Petty picking up for Sidewinders. Lefty deep, unable to connect. I'm wondering if this is a point where uh, Super Bloom might call a, a timeout to see if they can. Oh, we have 24 seconds left on the clock. So this could be the last possession of the quarter. We see Blair going deep. Iwamoto centers uh, again, fighting for that high side to Willis, looking for something. Very aggressive mark. Unfortunate drop. And Sidewinders have a chance. Looks like we got to finish out this quarter potentially. The clock is changing a little bit. No Looks like we have. Oh, and a great D. No. That should be the end of the half. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like the, the clock was 
resetting for a couple of those calls there. And that was the last possession of this quarter, which means we are going into the second half. This is maybe not the game that I expected to see between Sidewinders and Superbloom, given that Superbloom was coming off of a very tight game against Astra. I would think that, you know, their top players, Helton, Iwamoto, Pajunas, honestly, all of them ran ran a lot. Let's see a replay. That was the final turn. Great day by Crypto. And just Sidewinders having not quite dominating the spaces that I would think they would be able to dominate. Uh, some miscommunications. I think the wind, again, is, is having a factor. Maybe some personnel changes as they're getting used to them could also be playing into that. What do you think they're discussing going into the second half? What, what do you think they're going to try to focus on coming out? I think Sidewinders need to focus on playing their own game and not worrying about the wind or the score right now. I think they have the players. They know that they have the ability to do this. Um, but yeah, it's got to be hard coming from behind. Uh, probably play a possession game. And we will be right back after break going into the second half here in the second game. And we're back in the Sidewinders San Diego Showdown at the San Diego Beach Bowl. You know, San Diego is known for its beautiful weather, but I think the wind is definitely coming into play. Let's take a look at these game stats here. We see both sides have two holds here, clean holds one. We do see uh, Sidewinders leading a little bit on total turnovers, but Superbloom is also up there. Uh, we do see Superbloom with six breaks to Sidewinders one and then break chances 15 for Super Bloom to Sidewinders three. Yeah that break chances stat is very telling you have to see that uh, Super Bloom has been given many many opportunities to get the goals and the score that they have right now so I think Sidewinders need to clean it up a little bit and possess yeah, and here we see the standings are now updated. We see Super Bloom now in third, coming off of that intense, exciting win against Astra in double overtime. They're standing now 2-1, and we see Sidewinders just below at 2-2, with this game really making it or breaking it in terms of the championship that is coming up for those top four spots. And we can see Utah Wild, Falcons, and Onyx just below there. Sorry, Astra. And I think we're, we're seeing the, I was asking earlier if the mascot for 
Sidewinders does travel with the team, and it looks like we're having a mascot battle, folks. Looks like we're seeing Poppy versus Sidewinder. We'll be right back after a short break, and we'll let you know how this mascot face-off ends. <laughs> we believe that women and non-binary athletes deserve to be seen and our abilities showcased for the world to see. We, we believe, believe in perpetuating ultimate by establishing professional teams and developing future generations of players. We, we believe, believe players of all identities and backgrounds deserve an equal opportunity to be recognized and lauded for our achievements in our sport. We, we believe, believe in sustainably and responsibly creating equitable and accessible avenues for women and non-binary athletes to join and participate in our sport. We, we believe that being, being transparent, transparent, open, and responsive to criticism is critical and that there should always be space to fix our mistakes, grow, grow and, and be, be better. better. We, we are the Western, Western Ultimate League. League. that they can be athletes too. I've struggled with imposter syndrome and I've really had to ground myself in why I play. I play because it's fun. I like to compete. I like to show it with my teammates. I like to push myself to be the best. And I think being out there and doing that for them and having other people see and potentially think that, hey, that can be me one day, that's really exciting. I know I've struggled in my own life to like take up space and I think that it's so amazing that the ultimate field has like changed that for me that I can get out there and I'm like, no, I know I am a good cutter and I know what I need to do here and I know my role on the team. And I think that it's just helped me open up so much. It's also led to more confidence for myself. And I really want for other women and non-binary folk to see that, oh, they're out there doing this. How do I get into that? What does that look like? You know, what's my role there? I really liked a combination of both endurance and shorter, more competitive sprints, and then also going up directly against players. And I think that also is what attracted me to Ultimate as well. Understanding like what you're capable of doing is just a really great experience that kind of drives you to just get better at those individual skills in sports. My Ultimate story, I've been fortunate to have coaches and friends and the community to encourage me to be the player that I am today. And like, ultimately fall in love with the sport of ultimate. So I hope that the Western Ultimate League, like this program we have today, the open side, we continue to connect and welcome new fans and future players and continue growing this community that we all love. I think hopefully one day that someone will fall in love with the sport as much as I love it. I think that's the biggest thing for me is just knowing that we're giving an opportunity and visibility to the sport for young women. It's let's the go, best let's go thing. one more time. Oh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Baby! Cody! And welcome back to the Super Bloom versus Sidewinders game. Kayla That's Hilton is absolutely destroying it today. Two goals, five blocks, a couple turns, but. When you have that many blocks, you can it take even some chances. Out. Actually, I mean, one more block than turn, so. <laughs> Let's look at some highlights from the game so far. Hilton highlights. Here we go. That's a no. 
And then Helton says, I'll take it deep, though. There we go. Beautiful catch there. And another D from Helton. For Jonas, airing it out to Helton. Right yes. on the end zone line. Dominating that deep space as a defensive player and offense. And there we have Helton there. Just world team quality play out there. She's a stud. Can confirm. Yeah, I think uh, coming into this second half, Sidewinders have to shake it up a little bit. I think their O-line is able to move the disc, but there are just one or two miscommunications, and then San Diego is really capitalizing on that quick turn, getting that disc downfield. Uh, as you saw in that highlight package, uh, Helton in the deep space. San Diego is, is looking for those deep looks, and I want Sidewinders to, to challenge those a little more. Yeah, it's going to be an adjustment for them. I feel like they're used to going um, usually deep from Ari Nelson to Helen Eifer, and with both of those gals not here, uh, Sidewinders are going to have to make a couple adjustments. We'll see what happens in the second half with Sidewinders coming out on D. Willis picking up, centering to Iwamoto. Sidewinders in a fronting defense, taking away a lot of those undercuts. Really tight handler D as well. Ah, oh, what a step back throw from Iwamoto to Salvation. Messner with the grab. Seeing Mester puts Avery. it up to Avery, and Avery's with the grab for a goal. Messer saying, oh, Avery Jones, the one who's been scoring today. Yeah, I'll put it up to her. <laughs> with her dance again. <laughs> just phenomenal celebrations. I think that's why the, the team wants her in the end zone, just to see those celebration dances. Let's get a replay. We see Messner snagging it on the sideline, putting it up. Great shape on that throw to Jones. Just a nice outside in. Yep, did not give Megan Maxfield much to work with on the defensive play. So and we see Jones stats here. Three goals in this game. One assist. No blocks yet and just one turnover. But those three goals really speak for themselves. So in the positive, that's all you got to ask for. Super Bloom pulling. Steiner picking up. It's like Super Bloom is in a bit of a saggy junk here. These dumps are able to ping pong, looking big, cross field, and it's completed. Great look from Aragon. We'll see what their end zone looks like. Break side. Oh, 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 oh. Cannot hold on to it. That is such an unfortunate bobble. Unfortunate for Doyle. Yeah, it looks like Sidewinders had not quite gotten into their end zone set yet and just zeroed in on Doyle in that space, but couldn't quite cinch that hold. Sidewinders look like they're going into a bit of an adjustment with their defensive play. Uh, dedicating one person to taking away the end cut in that open lane. And we're airing it out. Tesler with the disc, looking for Ellis to dump. Kayla with the disc. Helton seeing, looking for Ellis, looking for Ellis. Seeing, saying instead. Frost to Lang. Lang with the dump break. Lefty backhands. This team loves them. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a staple of UCSD players. Lexa with a great fake there. Back to Lang. Knocking on the doorstep. Fakes the scuba to Pujonas. Pujonas throws the break to Lexa. Steinball with the goal. Nice, easy handlers, or sorry, end zone set there. Just swinging filling, cutting up line when needed. 
Let's get a replay of that. We see Lang there getting it to Pajunas, who sees a nice break option in Lexa Stamba. With her doppelganger, Kayla. <laughs> yeah, they both have bows. And from way up here in the box, a little hard to tell the <laughs> yeah. difference. Yeah, Super Bloom just seeming to maintain their dominance in the second half so far. The score uh, being 10 3, Super Bloom. Sidewinders, O oh, offense. Probably talking about what their play should be out out of the pool. Yeah, we'll see what adjustments they make with a different O-line maybe. Looks like we have center to Shelby Petty. Looking for K-Pal. Dump. Goes to Sim Khalsa. Oh, nice break that cannot be held on to. Pujonas now has it, centers it to Zhang. Pujonas faking deep, and then gets a big gainer. Wool holstering it for Vinegarkar's undercut. Neha centers it to Ling. Swings it to Pajonas. Looks like Wool is poached over there. No defender on. Nice patient offense from the Super Bloom. Zhang and Lang working it. Lang puts it out there and throws her receiver open. It's Neha. Ne Neha Vinekunker able to get that break throw that Lang just saw. The defender wasn't quite paying attention and able to use that break side. But yeah, patient end zone set there. Let's see if we can get a replay of that score. Here we are, Lang just saying, hey, I see you out there. And Vine Kukar able to just reel it in. Mm -hmm. I think as we see this third quarter progress, we're really seeing, I'd say, Super Bloom's looking very comfortable playing their own game. And that is a difference from their first game. Flipping caught with the disc. Looking for a dump. Gets one in Steiner. Steiner has to boost it, and Pujonas is there to eat it up. Just knocking it down, giving, giving some time for handlers to come pick up the disc and move that disc downfield. And this point differential that we're seeing Super Bloom able to rack up it during this game is definitely, oh, Diedrich with the D. Throwing a little bit behind Pujonas. Open it up for Golden Jade. McLaughlin able to just run down to the end zone and bring Sidewinders up to four. Super Here we see like side. They were not ready for that. Yeah, really taking advantage of that quick turn. Mm -hmm. Very, very quick and smart transition from Sidewinders. Definitely a needed point for Sidewinders. Hopefully, getting their energy up and coming back fighting for the rest of this third quarter. As I was saying earlier, the point differential that San Diego has right now could definitely benefit. Oh, quick replay here of that score. McLaughlin with Wide no open. defenders in sight because of that turn, quick turn. But yeah, the point differential, definitely a big help for San Diego when it comes to standings for, for the championship and possibly hurting Sidewinders as well. It's like Sidewinders coming out in the zone, the three-person cup, two people fronting the unders. 
Kelly Iwamoto immediately with a lefty backhand to Hannah Walters. Walters to Avery Jones. I think they're utilizing four handlers in this zone, and that's an adjustment that they've made from the last game when the Astro was doing a very good zone against them. Definitely, and it's opening up that lateral space for them, making their allowing there to be an option when one of those handlers does crash and there's another one for the dump, we still have a fourth handler for a far side swing if needed. It does look like Cynthia Thomas's person on that far handler, AKA Kelly Iwamoto. So we'll see if these three handlers can dish it back and forth and break through this cup. Yeah, Superbloom has definitely been focusing on their zone offense, working it against zones like this. See that swing? Ah, oh, unfortunate. That was a great. Sam great Myland D. almost with the D. But San Diego able to maintain possession. Still working against this zone. Handler's a little bit trapped on this far side. Yeah, we can see when it does get back to the center, sidewinders are just really tightening up on that fourth person back, making sure that swing looks like it might be an option, but more of a possibility of a run through D there. As we saw from last time. Yeah, we'll see. We're super bloom moving back a little. See if they can get through this zone. But seeming comfortable with handlers moving it. Something that they've been practicing. Oof, nearly there. Maxfield on the mark. Super Bloom just playing catch right now. Playing catch on a windy field. <laughs> It sounds like super, or sidewinders are about to go into person defense. Yeah, it looks like, looks like they've closed out of the zone. See Messner looking for Iwamoto. Ah, oh, good heads of D. Shelby Petty. From Shelby Petty. Streaking deep. I believe that is Kay Powell with a disc. Kay putting it up. Megan Maxfield with the goal. Yeah, k Powell, just a phenomenal standstill hucker, able to, from, from that position, see the downfield, take that deep shot, and get that score. It might have been a bit of a high stall bailout option, but it worked out. Megan Maxfield. Generally plays for Lawless and is one of those Let's see that small replay. but mighty players who goes deep a lot. See the D there from Shelby Petty and then Kay Powell putting it up and Maxfield just having a great read on that disc in the end zone. Another much needed score for Sidewinders. It does look like they're trying to close that gap in the score for the second half of this quarter. Definitely showing Super Bloom that, that they are still in this fight. With this much of a lead, it looks like Super Bloom might be opening up their lines a little bit. Giving Kayla Hilton a point to take a break. Yeah, some, some much needed rest after dominating the deep space on both O and D. Looks like there might be a false start or an offsides time violation oh so just a recap on a pool offense has 40 seconds to signal readiness and then after that signal defense has uh 20 seconds to pull so super balloon gets it in the middle of their own end zone that's gonna be tough Callahan country. Definitely, and that would be a huge win for Sidewinders, probably bringing up their energy. They need some juice right now. 
might even say they need some venom. <laughs> All right, Lang immediately has an open option. Oh, unfortunate drop. Maybe a little, little too much zip on that throw and bounces off of Juan. Looks like there might be a call, timeout call for Sidewinders. Indeed. <laughs> Looks like the Sidewinders players are. <laughs> so it looks like it was a timeout call for Sidewinders since they are offense. And um, there's the turn, unfortunate drop. Too much zip. Yeah, I feel like the Sidewinders line that was on there, you know, they're saying, hey, why is, why is there a timeout? We're really in this flow. But it really is a smart decision in the sense of being able to set up an end zone play when you're this close and capitalize on, on the break to strategize on what exactly you want. Yeah, they're in great field position right now. And like you said, every point matters. All right, let's take a look at our stores. Do you want to look as fly as the Arizona Sidewinders? Well, you can. Go ahead and visit the Arizona Sidewinders store at arizonasidewinders.com slash team store. I love those jerseys. Great and, snake vibe. <laughs> and of course, if you want to represent San Diego Super Bloom and Poppies, uh, you can go ahead and head to San Diego Super Bloom store. Same thing, just slash shop and we are back to this point post time out sidewinders with a disc looks like we have number 25 Marilyn Reich Reich looking for Jade oh, oh Jade with a bid but cannot come up with it that would have been a great shame connection I know both of those players pl have played together for a while on shame Iwamoto picking up on our own ends online. Kind of back where we started. Let's see if we Super Bloom can get out of that end zone and move it downfield. Avery Jones back to Kelly Iwamoto. Big fake there. Looking for a dump. Up line to Ellis. Ellis has a big option in Avery. Avery's defender tried to get that other D. Ooh. A little bit of traffic in the air there. That just kind of hung in the wind. Uh, looks like there was a stall call back on Iwamoto. Going to the observer. No stall call. No stall. I would imagine if it was... Interesting. Okay, so looks like what happened here is because it was a contested stall and then the observer called no stall, the call still stopped Boston play, it and it is now going back to Rebecca Ellis before uh, yes. the turn. Yes, going to be a All right, are we good? Coming in a pre-stall. Four, so Super Bloom three, getting another two, chance one. to score here. See Avery, Avery Jones open all day. Centers it to Iwamoto. It's really fun seeing Jones, Iwamoto, and Ellis working a handler set together. Looks like a high stall put. Oh, great bid, bid from Samantha Wool, but not quite able to connect there. Slidewinders picking up on their own end zone line. Let's see what they can do out of this vertical stack. Looks like they want a handler initiating. Cutters waiting downfield. Uh, another throw just off of the hands of a receiver. Unfortunate doink. Let's see what end zone Super Bloom puts up. Iomoto picking up. Vertical stack. 
Looking for Avery. It's another goal. <laughs> another goal for Avery Jones. Is that four now? Maybe five. <laughs> Possibly five. Countless, really. Uh, great connection there with Iw Iwamoto and Jones. Really able to punch it in. Let's get a replay there. We see Iwamoto. Thought about throwing it to Ellis, and then Avery Jones open just behind Ellis. That was a really, honestly, fortunate call for Super Bloom that the stall uh, ended up bringing the throw back to Ellis instead of it being a turn down in that kind of trafficy uh, high stall put that happened in it. It yes. looks like they were able to capitalize, even though Sidewinders did get possession back and had that unfortunate just off the hands throw there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate for Sidewinders. Hopefully they can come up with something here on O. Steiner to LP. Back to Steiner to LP. Superboom coming in his own. Steiner, not a lot of options. Goes over the top to the cross field upwind. Jade McLaughlin with it. Back to Steiner. To LP. Aragon and, and Steiner really able to work against this cup. Looks like Sidewinders. Oh, Cody Lip. Ah, oh, a little bit too much juice on that toss. Yeah, Cody Lippincott trying to bid to, to get a score for Sidewinders there. Just out of reach. We'll get a replay of that. We see McLaughlin shooting for Lippincott and Lippincott bidding, but not quite able to connect. But Sidewinders able to have broken through. Jade with an immediate D on the gold line. We're back in. Nice! Because it's number 11, LP Aragon for the goal. Yeah, that was an immediate turn back. You said it was a, a D by McLaughlin and then able to just shoot it into Aragon. Let's get a replay of that. That looked like a good poach D by McLaughlin. Seeing not quite in, able to just put it up to Aragon for a much needed score for Sidewinders, bringing us to 12-6 as we go into the final minute of this third quarter. I feel like Sidewinders are bringing, are bringing some more energy to this game at this point. I feel like they're settling into their roles with the, the change in personnel and are kind of showing Super Bloom, you know, don't count us out yet. We're still in this and we have a, a deep roster, a lot of talent on Sidewinders. Super Bloom on O, immediately centering to Kelly Iwamoto to Avery Jones. Jones looks deep immediately. Open receiver. Jessica Wan just able to read that even with two sidewinders, defenders. That lefty backhand. And it's a goal. Yeah, great body awareness by Dabowski. Able to grab that from Maldonado and it was a quick response from Super Bloom's O-line. That was a great hold by Super Bloom. Let's see if we can get a replay of that. I want to see that deep shot again. Yeah, it looked like she was potentially covered, but that was a perfect throw. Here we go. We see Avery stepping out, making it happen. Yeah, and then uh, another UCSD alum, Jessica Wan, able to just cinch it. And then we see back to Maldonado with a nice lefty flick, it looks like. Or am I, I'm missing maybe, but great put to Dabowski in the end zone. Superman with a deep pull. Steiner to LP to Steiner to LP. Marilyn Reich uncovered. That like is never a good sign. <laughs> Doyle, back to Steiner. Steiner looking for Doyle, probably a high stall. Nice break throw, 
followed by another break. Oh, oh my goodness! Yes, Jade with another goal. McLaughlin with an athletic catch in the end zone, and that is it for the third quarter. We are, it should be 13-7, I believe now, at the end of the third quarter. Let's see if we can get a replay of that. Sidewinder's just really able to move it. We see again here, McLaughlin going to the ground to make sure she maintains possession and ends the quarter with that Sidewinder score, bringing us to 13-7 with Superbloom still in the lead. But Sidewinder's definitely coming in with more energy. And we can see some fans here as we see Sidewinder celebrating going into a quick break and then we will be back for the fourth quarter. are back in San Diego's Beach Bowl. We are entering the final quarter of the game for Sidewinders and Super Bloom. We can see the standings here. Once again, pivotal game for both teams here. It is a make it break it kind of situation with both Super Bloom and Sidewinders needing this win, needing the point differential as well to work in their favor. We see Sidewinders coming out on offense. Sidewinders using four handlers and the full width of the field <laughs> with that pass to Jade. Just handlers a working it. Ooh, a little, little bit, bit of, of contact. Flipping caught does not seem phased. But and play resumes with a goal. Unsure. I do think there was a little miscommunication on, on in terms of was a call actually made on that contact? Was it called as a foul? If so, play should stop. But I don't know if all players on the field were aware. So it's back to Lippincott. Gets, Scooped up. Gets the dump off. Sidewinder's really having to work for this goal. Marilyn Reich getting it back to Aragon. I believe there's a pick called. Lexa Stomba on D. And we're back. All right. Yeah, just kind of, you know, working out the calls, making sure everyone is on board. That's part of, you know, playing with integrity, making sure everyone on the field is aware of what's going on with these calls. Aragon looking for a dump. She's got a bill out to Diedrich for a goal. Diedrich not to be counted out after that bid early on. Still able to score for Sidewinders. It's now 8 to 13, not as much of a lead as Let's there was. Let's see a replay there. Aragon seeing Dietrich and saying, yes. That Lippin is a receiver. There. Two phenomenal options in the deep zone. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing Sidewinders just, it feels like their energy is building each quarter, and that is making this game closer as we get to a score of 
and we see Super Bloom O line on the line here. Looks like we have Jade McLaughlin pulling for Sidewinders. Wonder what kind of play Super Bloom's going to come out with. Willis centering to Iwamoto. Looks like they're in person D, the side stack. Seeing Salvishan, who's looking for a dump. Maybe too many of them. Iwamoto able to scoop that up. I can't tell you how fast Iwamoto is. <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> too fast. Avery oh. can't come up with it. But, but Messner there. <laughs> Blair with a great centering pass. A nice, nice break side to Torch. Yeah, good inside flick from Willis. Another lefty backhand. Oh, look at that movement, but actually looking for Jessica Juan in the end zone. And that is another Super Bloom score. Lots of quick movement there. Lots of great movement from the handlers. Uh, Let's see that play again. We see Iwamoto with a quick give and go, but actually we see Jessica Wan in the end zone with a good defensive pressure from Liz Murphy there, number 13. But Liz just almost coming up with the D, but deep. just out of her reach. Exactly. Yeah, Super Bloom kind of seemed like their downfield was a little clogged up there, maybe with the Sidewinder defense but they were able to rely on their handler movement and, and get that disc down to the end zone. Playing with the pull. Aragon. Aragon and Steiner. Back to Steiner. Looks like we are seeing a zone look from Super Bloom defense. Huge put. Let's see if Doyle Oh, oh, my. Doyle comes down with it. Goodness. That was a heads up between Doyle and Kayla Helton. And Doyle was able to just tiptoe, reach above, and come down with that score. Let's see a replay of that deep shot. Sidewinders testing Kayla Helton again. Here we go with a deep shot from Steiner. Steiner and Helton. Vying for that space. Kayla right there in the right position in front of her. One more time, we see that. Steiner just able to get a little more hop and snag that disc in the end zone. One more time. You know they show it three times because <laughs> Helton has been such a deep, dominant player. It's probably gonna fire up even more. Look out. Oh, definitely. <laughs> All right, Sidewinder's defense coming down, trying to shut down the Super Bloom offense. Iwamoto to Messner. Messner has some deep options. There might be a, a travel call. Travel call. All right, I was wondering if it was an in-out call. Like, she definitely caught it on the inside and then maybe took a couple steps out. Travel call does not stop play, so time is running. Capel on the mark. Iwamoto with the bailout dump. She's got Hannah Walter. Messer, Back to Messner. Coming in for that fill. Great positioning. Some poachy. Oh, looks like we have some contact downfield. Pick seems to have been called by Sidewinders. All right, back in play. Walter with the disc. Iwamoto up line. Seeing Dabowski looking for Iwamoto for that dump. Every other for Iwamoto. <laughs> Jessica Juan again and in the end zone. Jessica Juan, another quick player, just able to gain those first few early steps on her defender and get to that that space. Super Bloom celebrating here. 
I wonder how many Super Bloom players have scored goals in this game. This is a very high scoring game. Yeah, here we go with Iwamoto seeing one and saying, yeah, yeah, that's open. <laughs> great bid from the defender, but there's only so much you can do. Yeah, great defensive pressure from Sidewinders here. Definitely challenging these cuts, these throws, putting the pressure on. But Super Bloom, I think, finding their rhythm in this second game and able to trust each other in these looks. Kayla Helton with the pull. Real floaty pull, gives time for defense to set. Looks like oh. another zone look. <laughs> Looks like Samantha Wool there kind of hunting for a run through on, on, the, on the pool. Aragon. Back to Steiner. Seeing McLaughlin. These three are definitely running the handler set. Oh. Oh, too excited to get that one off. Yeah, definitely saw that they were able to get past the San Diego zone and I think got a little too excited, but the McLaughlin, Steiner, Aragon movement in the backspace was, was working against that zone. Pajunas. Pajunas putting it deep. Can Neha come down with it? Slightly out of bounds. Yeah, just a little picked up by the wind a little bit, pushed out of bounds. Trying to look, I think that was the connection earlier was Pajunas to Vine Concur. Trying to reenact it, but the wind said not, not yet. Harley Steiner bringing it in on the sideline. Immediately looking for Aragon. Oh, looks like there's a call, maybe an injury. Samantha Wool for Super Bloom coming off. Maybe like a, a rolled ankle. Yeah, playing on turf is not my favorite. Yeah, Brenda Stevens coming in for the substitution. Uh, do you want to sub? Yeah. Sub coming. Looks like we are also getting a sub on Sidewinders. Looks like Steiner's coming out. And we have number 16. Sam Myland coming in. We'll see how this affects the Sidewinder. We saw four, offense. three, two, one. Stevens filling in as that. Oh, a good over the top throw from Aragon. Able to break through that cut. Love to see the hammer. Looks like they've transitioned to person. Lippincott nearing the end zone to Jade. Lippincott. LP's got it looking break for a goal. And Marilyn Reich with the score. That was really great movement from Sidewinders, able to break that cup with a that big over over the top throw, upside down throw. And then once they got past the cup, they just kept moving it, staying ahead of their defenders. Let's see that again. Lippincott with that disc. To Mylan, Aragon with that break throw for the score. Sidewinders trying to get hype late in this game. Yeah, as as we've said before, you know, every point matters. And if they can get their score as close as possible, get as many points as possible, it will only serve to help their standings. Okay, Powell coming out with the toss. inbounds in the middle of the field. Hannah Walters picking up. So they're in a split stack. Torch fighting for position. Avery Jones with the disc. Blair's going deep. Hannah's got it. Hannah Walter fakes Messner off. Looks like a block, but there might be some contact on there. I don't believe Reich is contesting that. Back with Walter, seeing Jones. Ooh, Ooh, Cynthia Thomas bidding for that D. Looked like Hannah's toss also got a little touch on it. Hannah to Jones, Jones the break. Unfortunate, it does not connect. Sidewinders here with a chance. Yeah, this is a chance here for Sidewinders to get within four 
of Super Bloom. Looks like Cynthia Thomas might need a break here. Yeah, she is off the field. Did we get a substitute? Okay. Yeah, you can move. No timeout. No time oh, sorry, out. Sorry, no, no, it's an injury. Injury sub. Injury. Looks like so right. You didn't know if there was a sorry, yeah, you can't move during an injury sub. My, my, my fault. So it looks like Reich is back on the field. It is an injury call, but we're not sure who's getting subbed out. Looks like Kayla Helton is coming in for Super Bloom. But players are not allowed to move on in injury substitutions. Sam Milan coming into the game. And we're asking for time on the clock to be added back to the point where injury was called. We are now at four minutes and 49 seconds with Sidewinders with a chance to bring this score within four. Reich with the disc. An unfortunate stumble from number 33. Kayla immediately picks it up for a fast transition. Uemoto with the disc, back to Hilton. Looks like there is a pick call downfield. Super Bloom in a vertical stack for their end zone set. Hilton with the disc. Blair Messner going oven, not an option. Back to Uemoto, oh, back e to Hilton, back to Uemoto. Uemoto. Quick as lightning out there. Avery Jones. Jones looking. Hannah Walters opts for the break to Kayla Helton for the goal. You know, that was a really great use of movement there. We see Jones going up line, clearing that space for Walter the, to then throw a break to Helton for the score. Sidewinders rushing back down to field. Yeah, a lot of times you're making a cut not just to get the disc, but to create space for somebody else to get it. Let's, Let's see. see a re replay. There's that unfortunate turn for Sidewinders. And then we see Helton scoring once again for Super Bloom. I feel like Super Bloom, you know, is really comfortable in their end zone set. We see the movement seems pretty rote for them. They know what they're doing. They know where they should go. Uh, and it's hard to defend against that kind of system. Steiner to LP, back to Steiner for a big gain. Steiner airs it out. Oh, wide open, but unfortunate drop. Steiner spotting Meredith Bile across field, but like you said, unfortunate drop. Super Bloom with another chance here. Ellis starting, getting it to Zing. Back to Ellis. Looking downfield, Lauren Stewart, fine concur on the sideline, back to Ellis. Definitely a pick <laughs> as the players had to run through each other to get to that space. Going back to Ellis and we are just under three minutes left in this quarter. Oh, a great D by Meredith Bile. And she's looking for the bookends. She did it. I think she was making up for that throw that just, just went off the hands earlier. And she said, watch this. Run through D and then for the score. Seeing it again here. Let's see that. Run through D. Keeps running. Turns the page for the goal. Yeah, that was a great read on that throw, seeing, oh, it's actually over the other shoulder, turning around, making sure she grabbed that for the score. It looks like she gave her handler two options. <laughs> and now we see Super Bloom on O-line here with Sidewinder's pool. Great shot just at the 30 line. Center to Iwamoto. Looks like they're sagging to take away that easy open side throw. Oh. 
very tight D. Uh, looks like there might have been some incidental contact there. Sidewinders downfield D on those cutters is tight person D, really challenging every everyone. Kelly Iwamoto with an oven cut. Gets an easy dump off. Looks like the stack is a little unsure of spacing right now. Yeah, that backhand force might be messing with him a little bit. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> Maldonado able to break it to Iwamoto. Jones looking for Maldonado. Will it go back to Jones? See no, Iwamoto up line. And Dabowski in the right place at the right time. That is another score for Super Bloom. I think you're right in that the backhand force did trip them up a little bit, kind of close off the cuts downfield as everyone got reoriented, and then they were able to figure it out and come through with the score. Let's see that replay. Kelly Uemoto making it look easy. It helps when your defender, or when your, when Christina Dabowski is wide open. Yeah, Christina Dabowski uh, plays for San Diego Burrito, a mixed team. Definitely a downfield threat. Nice, such a nice person. Super huge, tall, super nice. Huge downfield threat. Will come down with the disc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in the LA game, she had the task of guarding Dina Elomelik, as well as Kayla Holton. Height against height. Sidewinders seeing a cutter streaking deep here but choosing to do handler motion instead, Spine keeping possession. To Jade, to Marilyn Reich. Ashley Stahl, back to Reich. Aragon, Steiner again. Oh, just off the tips. Unfortunate, there might be a call, another injury call. It looks like it is Pajunas maybe hit the ground in an... Got to tell you folks, the turf out there is rough to land on. And these players are just, you know, casually throwing their bodies around on this turf. Yeah, I saw Kayla had like three turf burns all over her body, so do not envy her and have been in that position. But get in all those blocks. <laughs> The price, the price of greatness. For the stats, it's worth it. All right, we are back in play here. Looks like Super Bloom is, has Ling picking up. Kill Holton immediately busting deep. Ling puts it to her. McLaughlin right there, challenging it. Great read by Kayla. Way to play your defender. Find Kukur there for the bailout, giving it back to Feng. Find Kukur again. Super Bloom, plenty of time. We have 20-ish seconds left on the clock, but it does look like there is a call, pit call. But folks, this could very likely be the last possession of the game. Super Bloom just needing to maintain that possession here. Oh, easy run through D. As she streaks deep, Carly Steiner's thinking about it. And an unfortunate drop. Just Lang little... picks up for Super Bloom. Gets the swing off. Five, and we four, are back to three, two, one. now the final possession. Good D by Steiner, but that's the game. Super Bloom 17, Arizona Sidewinders 11. That was a great second half for Sidewinders. They, yeah. in the first half, definitely came out a little wobbly against a fired up Super Bloom coming off of that double overtime win against Astra. But it definitely seems like Sidewinders were able to pull it together, pull ahead, score some more points in the second half and show that they are a team to contend with, even with these personnel changes, even with the wind and able to put up a good fight in that second half. But Super Bloom ultimately had probably too much of a lead from that first half and Sidewinders just not able to quite make up for it. 
It does seem like Super Bloom capitalized on the energy from the first game and brought it into the second game. Sidewinders will have a chance tomorrow versus Astra, and we're gonna see the play of the game now. It's Kayla Hilton. Here we go, we see Kayla Hilton. Great deep D. One more time. Comes from nowhere to get the D on Aubrey Diedrich. Another one, replay again. Look at that awareness, just a great read on that disc. Able to make a good play on that without any contact with the with the off offensive player. And here we see the now two-time champs of today. Super Bloom really coming out today, able to fight with Astra in a double overtime, cinching it for the win, and then coming out strong against Sidewinders with that energy and able to win with a very helpful point differential. As we look into the weeks ahead, that could definitely help them in their standings. Yeah, I think Super Bloom learned a lot from the zone defense that was thrown at them, and they threw their own zone that worked out very well against the Sidewinders. Unfortunate that the Sidewinders are missing a couple players that are uh, pretty key for them. Helen Eifert not here to make them the phenomenal plays that she usually makes. Um, We'll see what happens tomorrow in the game versus Astra. It should be a very exciting, very interesting game for the standings. Yeah, folks, don't forget that this Beach Bowl continues tomorrow with Astra facing Sidewinders, I believe 11 o'clock tomorrow. Same place, Mira Mesa High School here in San Diego. And we'll see how these two teams face up against each other in tomorrow's game. I I think Astra is definitely going to, you know, want to come out strong. They played an excellent game against Super Bloom, fighting neck and neck for that do double overtime. And then Sidewinders are probably going to be able to talk through what changes they need to make and probably watch the footage from that game with Astra and come up with a strategy. Yeah, it will be definitely interesting to see what adapt adaptations they make from the last game, uh, what different strategies and schemes that they come up with, and what adjustments they make in general to their O-line to make some of these goals happen. Yeah, I think it's... Uh all right, so now we have the updated standings with Super Bloom's win against Sidewinders and Astra today. That definitely bumps them up in the standings. We see that they are now number two, just behind Tempest. Yeah, they are in a strong position to make playoffs now with these two wins under their belt. And then we do see Sidewinders is, I believe they started in the uh, fourth position. Or Tomorrow is a must win for Arizona. And Ashra, honestly, uh, looks like it'll be an interesting game to watch. Yeah, Sidewinder is definitely needing that win to keep them in the in the running for the playoffs. We see some of the great plays from the game. Kayla a, with another D. Yeah, here we see you know Sidewinders able to come down with that oh, amazing catch by Doyle over Helton. Iwamoto with another D. And we really hope to see you all tomorrow at the game with Astra against Sidewinders, 11 o'clock. And it should be another exciting day of Ultimate. Thank you all for joining us.